The picture gallery at Temple Newsome is the grandest room in the house and one of the greatest interiors of mid-Georgian England. By the early 1700s, the old Jacobean Long Gallery, created by Sir Arthur Ingram a hundred years previously, had got into very bad condition. So when Henry VII Viscount Irwin inherited the property in the 1730s, he set about rebuilding it. Its purpose was to hang the family collection of paintings, particularly the family portraits, and also the little expensive cabinet pictures, which had been collected by his brother Edward, the fourth Lord Irwin, when he was on his grand tour of Italy. In particular, there were the stormy seascapes, landscapes, and battle scenes, which had been bought en bloc in Venice from the artist Antonio Marini. The gallery was also used for parading elegantly on wet days, as well as admiring the paintings, and then for big parties and assemblies. Henry's brother had lost most of the family fortune in the South Sea bubble, the great financial disaster of the early 1720s, and so therefore he was extremely short of cash for the rebuilding of the gallery. Instead of going to London for his craftsmen, he went to York. The ceiling has wonderful festive plaster work by Joseph Rose and Thomas Perrett, and there is virtuoso carving by Richard Fisher and his family from York. For his two fireplaces, he went to the builder Robert Doe of London, and for the furniture to James Pascal. There are a number of themes to be found hidden in this room. In the centre of the ceiling is a portrait medallion of King George I, and around the edges are similar medallions of all members of the royal family. It shows how Henry and his family were loyal to the House of Hanover, really crucial at this time when the Jacobite uprisings were taking place. In the centre of the north wall are two portraits of King William III and Mary II, just to show the family's loyalty to the glorious revolution of 1688. Originally, there were full-length portraits of royalist heroes from the Civil War, just to show which side the family had been on. The theme of loyalty continues on the courtyard side, where Henry placed the enormous portrait of his father. This man had fathered no less than nine sons in the course of the 16 years of his marriage. Here on the east side, Henry hung the double portrait of his brother Richard and his wife Lady Anne Howard from Castle Howard. And then opposite, he commissioned another portrait of himself and his wife as a pendant by the French artist Philippe Mercier, then living in York. Henry was clearly very proud of his achievement in creating this new room, because in his hand he holds a plan for the plasterwork ceiling, and in the background is Temple Newsome itself. But perhaps the real star of the show is the furniture. Henry went and ordered from James Pascal of Covent Garden in London a suite of 20 side chairs, four sofas, two small tables, eight candle stands, one large day bed, and these two fantastic wall lights, or girandoles, with their six candle branches each. You can see that they represent a hound pursuing a stag. And this is the story of Diana and Acteon. Prince Acteon, who was out hunting, came across the goddess Diana and her attendants bathing, stark naked. And for his punishment for seeing her in this state, he was turned into a stag so that he would be mauled to death by his own hounds. The effect of the flickering candlelight really brings the story to life. Even the dog's tongue seemed to be moving. Similarly, the two large marble top tables have the figure of Pan in the center, and he is being driven by his two hounds towards the nymph Syrinx, who we see here in the candle stands. She is saved from his clutches by being transformed into bulrushes as he approaches. She's the origin of Pan's pipes. Slowly but surely, over the years, much of the furniture and many of the pictures have returned. Today, there are about three quarters of the original pictures hanging on the walls in exactly the locations where they were in 1750.